Hi, I'm Cyberact with Outlandishly Crafted, and today we're gonna talk about colors. Colors like dyes, yeah, those kind of colors. So let's put this bookshelf down and let's check out how this works. So if I jump over here and I look at my bookshelf. I got a bookshelf and I have a die and if I put this die on the bookshelf it tints everything the color of the die but it doesn't change the book the paper it's not changing the whites of the paper here and I can bet if you've tried to use dies before you have found them pretty frustrating because they wash out the colors of your entity so here's a nice example of setting up change color for your entities. So any entities you've got, you can set them up to where you can change their colors and make them be something different. So you can see all of these entities I've made, I've put in the same technique so that they can all have all of these variants of different colors to have. So you can use dyes on them directly. Oh, that's not an entity. These are entities. Even the table. But see how the table doesn't completely change. See how the knobs have a tint to them but they're still saying. Now, on this example, almost everything is changing. So this is probably, whereas this one, you can see texture in it. This one, you can't. So this is a good example of how we're using the colors. So let's get down to them and let's go check out how do we set this up in Blockbench, or you could use an external editor, so that the colors stay what I want them to be and don't change. So right now let's talk about the whites of the book. So the top of the book right there. How does that not change to a different color when I use the color system? So let's jump into Blockbench and you can see here in Blockbench I've got my entity set up my bookshelf and you can notice that the wood here and the paper all are transparent so this is the secret the secret of setting up colors and the change color material is the things that have an alpha so you would go to paint and you would delete you would erase out the color so it, it you can see through it will not be colored the things that don't have an alpha that are solid like the faces of the book will be covered, colored. And there's a scale. So the more alpha, the less there is color. The less alpha, the more the color will change. So if I want these books, maybe I only want every other book to change, then I would take the delete tool and I would put it at an alpha, which is this guy of say like 128, and I would up his numbers, and I would just delete or erase, and you could use smoothing if you want, the book face right here, and that's going to erase it and make it transparent. And one of the ways we can see what is and isn't is see how it's so clear. When we right click over here and we go to render modes and we go to emissive, now I can see what's going to be nice and white, what's going to be nice and clear is all of these things that are super bright now. Whereas when I jump back and I go back to normal, so it's all of the things that are transparent. So everything that has an alpha will not receive the color as, as much as the things that don't. So this book will receive a lot of color, but the sides of the wood will only receive a little color. But the edges of the top of the book here won't receive any because or very very little if any because it's almost completely transparent 
Now you don't want to make it completely transparent because then you'll lose the texture and the text and what's there. You just need to add enough so that it's not triggering the color system. So that's how it looks in Blockbench. And when you're just editing and doing your stuff, you can flip it on to emissive mode so that it's easy to see and you don't have to deal with those alphas. But when you're actually working on it and editing it, this is what it's going to look like, and that's the goal. So let's go back to this in the game now, and let's look at this in the game. And you can see there's some little splotches that I put there at some point. I don't, I didn't mean to do that. I'm not sure where this came from, but you can see how the paper's bright, the tops of the books are bright. But now watch when we change. So we're going to go to brown. The wood all changed. It didn't completely change. We didn't lose the textures, but it changed enough that you you feel that there's a different tint to it. So if I grabbed another one of these and put it down somewhere, and I made this one blue, well, blue is probably a bad color, red, and this one black or this one blue, you can see the tints of the books have changed. So this is more purple, this is more pink. Now you can make, you could not take out the coloring on this wood and you would get more of this. So I didn't at change these and you can see how clear, how much that that's changing the color. Whereas on this one, I went through and I took the metal out. So the metal has an alpha making it so that the metal doesn't change colors when everything else changes colors. So this, I didn't do anything with this guy. So the whole thing's changing color. Same thing with the vase, the whole thing changes color. But with this one, I wanted the metal to show. So I, you can still see there's a tint there where I missed adding the alpha where the tint is changing. So the tint of the shadow right there is changing. But the metal itself is staying pretty nice and the same. Now on the bottles, I didn't do anything on the bottles. I should have. I should have come and made this white area transparent so that it wouldn't change color so only the liquid would change. And I, I might have, because you can see it, it does, it still needs more though. So this gives you a good idea of what we're doing. Now let's go see how to do it. Um, same thing I hear on the flowers, I excluded, so I did an alpha for the, the leaves, so that when you change the flower color, the leaves would stay. Now I could have done the stem as well, I probably should have. Um, but there you go. Okay, so let's jump out to Bridge, and this is Bridge version one. Uh, and the first off, the first thing we're gonna do is we need to add the dyes in. So we add the is dyeable in as a component. First thing. So if all you wanna do is they're gonna pick up a dye and they're gonna click your entity and you want it to change to that color, then you're done right here. It, it's dyeable, that's all you got to do. But if you want to be able to set the color yourself or randomize the color or use a tool to change the color like I am, then you have to come in here and you have to set up all of the colors that you want and you put in that color the color code for that color. And there's charts that you can download um, on you know, online or uh, wiki, uh, the wiki.bedrock.dev might have all these listed. But in essence, all these colors are listed and you can get them out of the vanilla, like for the cats and the sheep or whatever that use them. They list most of them all in there. So you can just pull out what number is what. Uh, but this is what you're doing. So you're setting the, the Minecraft color number four yellow is four so i set it to color yellow so i have now a component group in here for each color and to do a change color i have an interact with a let's see so we've got move rotate delete repair change 
and then change color. So I have an interact, and on the interact, it's just saying if you have the change color tool item in your hand, then fire off this event. And all the event is doing is the event is removing all the previous component groups and their colors. So it's just removing everything that exists now. So we're taking all the color we have away, because you can only have one at a time. And then we're adding randomly a color and saying color changed. So we're change we're just adding we're removing a component group and we're adding a new component group and we're just doing it randomly so you click change color and randomly you get a new color click change color and randomly get a new color and it's critical that you have remove first we always remove the component group before we add the component group and that's all this is doing so this is just a simple change color off of a tool and then it will cycle that color when the player clicks it with the change color tool now something you could also do is for my butterflies I want it to change on spawn so when you spawn the entity it picks a random color from the randomizer here so we spawn a butterfly it comes to here it decides what size to be it decides what color to be and then I've also added in this change color auto timer which is something you can do that just says every 5 to 25 seconds change your color if the player is not nearby so if there's not a player within six blocks you can change your color to something else randomly and this just gives you the ability to have more variety in the things that you see flying around so that's really simple there we go we have two different ways to do it we can three different ways we can have diable by itself we can have diable and you can use a change tool we can have diable and you can use a change tool and you can randomize it at, on a time basis or with an interact tool or on spawn so that gives you a whole bunch of options right there to be able to change all of your different entities do all of those different things and we can even really quick while we're here let's pull up the butterfly and I'll show you the butterfly and then we'll spawn it really quick so you can see the same thing so here's my butterfly I only have one butterfly and you can see that I went through and I made the places that are dark slightly transparent and I made the wings slightly transparent so that they'll have that color so there's there's it without the transparency you see that bright white line and you see the black and then with the transparency you see that it really kind of has that pop now I could have done it more but it just takes more time to go through and and isolate out the white the, the uh, white circles and all of that stuff so let's jump back into the game and we'll spawn in a some butterflies and I'll let you see how the coloring of the butterflies uh, works the same way so it doesn't matter if it's a moving entity it doesn't matter if it's a chair it doesn't matter if it's uh, you know anything that has a behavior pack you can change those colors to be what you want to be now really quick before we get too far into there's one more thing that you have to do that I almost forgot and this is critical because this none of this will work without doing this so in your RP pack you're gonna go into your RP entity file and you have to use a material that has change color in it. it. It change color will not function unless you use a material that has change color. So I'm using an entity alpha test change color because, for example, the butterfly has an has a transparency already in it. So the butterfly can't be just entity change color I still need my alpha so let's give ourselves a butterfly spawn egg 
And let's just spawn a ton. Now, as you can see, when they spawn, they're randomizing their colors and their sizes. They're attracted to flowers. So we'll pull out some flowers. And you can see that the colors change pretty well. That even though I only took out a little bit of alpha in the texture of the color, you still get detail and you still get the blacks. Let's hold this up so they'll stop. They should hover if I stop moving. Here you go. There we go. So now we can start seeing a little better. So you see how their colors and everything blend in to what the texture is. Now you could easily go through there. You see here on the red one that the blacks have turned purple a little bit. So you could go through and add more alpha on those black lines to make them to where they are a deep dark black and there's no color change on them. But I think for the most part you can see it, it works pretty well just how it is. I don't think you have to put a lot more into it. But if you don't do that it will wash out whatever the texture is and just make a pure colored um, entity. And so you really want to have some of that, the alpha in there. You need to put some alpha in there. So there you go. There is your how to color entities so you can get them all looking pretty. This alone gives you, you know, like 20 variants to every entity you have really spicing up and bringing forward what you can do with things because it, it gives you that ability to have flowers that change color and things that are different than what you normally would with just a very little amount of work. Um, adding that to the butterflies, remember there's only one butterfly, but now there looks like there's, you know, 20 different variants of it. So you do the same thing with the hummingbird. So the hummingbird, I used the, I did the transparencies a little different with the hummingbird so that their colors kind of mix. So you can get, sorry, they're hard to track down, but the hummingbirds have, um, the same type of thing where then you, they'll auto change and you get different colors and different options. So there's a lot of ways to play with it to blend all of those colors together. So there you go. There is how to change colors in Minecraft Bedrock Edition using Blockbench. I am Cyberax with Outlandishly Crafted. If you'd like to support me, check out my games on Marketplace, Dragonfire Bedrock Edition and Dragonfire Nations. Check out my website, Outlandishly Crafted. And if you need more help, Jump into the Block Bench Discord, jump into the Bedrock Discord for add-ons, jump into the Bridge Discord, and ask those questions. Don't suffer out there. Ask for guides. Say, I need help. Get that help. The help's there. The community's there. Jump in and make a better add-on, you know? improve those skills if you're stuck and blocked right now don't keep being blocked some people will hit me up and say hey this guy helped me i've been stuck for a year don't wait that long before you reach out for help in the discord channels because you can get your question answered in a day or two pretty easily so if you need any other help hit up my website put a thumbs up or whatever crap people do these days on these platforms and thanks for watching